It's just coming up to 27 minutes after five o'clock. This is GB News on TV, online and on digital radio. I'm Nana Aquir, and on my panel today, political YouTuber Maya Tusi and media personality and writer Christine Hamilton. Right, so it's time for our Great British Debate this hour, and I'm asking, are Just Stop Oil a cause for good, or are they just disruptive? Protesters from Extinction Rebellion and Just Stop Oil have blocked 10 oil terminals across England today. They're demanding that the government stops at new oil and gas projects. But on a day where millions of households across the UK are seeing their energy costs spiral, I'm asking, are the protesters a force for good or just disruptive? I'm now joined by Graham Buss. He's the spokesperson for Just Stop Oil and a former principal scientist at Shell. Graham, thank you for joining us. OK, so why are you protesting across England today? Well, we're protesting for a very simple reason. We're protesting because we're in the middle of a climate crisis and our government needs to just stop oil. And as you've said, it's very simple. The government needs to not issue any new licenses for oil and gas. And the government needs to get a grip and make this commitment, make a plan and deliver it. Yeah, but, you know, so, so, so far your activists, they've chained themselves to fuel tankers. One tied himself to a goalpost at the Everton versus Newcastle United Park, uh, match at Goodison Park, and you've even disrupted the BAFTAs. Um, with this current crisis going on in, with Ukraine and the whole, you know, uh, Vladimir Putin, are you then pleased, would you be pleased if he stopped, Putin stopped supplying the West with oil? Um, what we're doing is not part of a, the war. We are not, that is not, there's always a problem. There's always a reason why you can't act. That we are doing this because we're in the middle of a climate crisis and we have to act. Now, the oil is the reason why we have a war. The sooner we move out of it, the better. So you would be happy then if he stopped supplying the West with oil? Just out of interest, because they're saying you don't want us to be doing this and everything. So in a way, if he stopped supplying the West with oil, that would actually be good for your cause. I think for the United Kingdom, we get very little oil from the North Sea. Um, so as far we're essentially self-sufficient in oil in the UK. So, but we don't get oil from Russia to any significant degree at all. I think it would make no difference to, to us. Now, look, we all want a healthy planet, and that, you know, and that's all very well demanding it. Uh, but what are your realistic alternatives then? Look. It's very simple. Our government needs to get a grip. It's digging a hole. It's digging a, our, our children's graves. By signing new licenses, it's driving a coach and horses through the government's carbon climbing commitments. It's criminally negligent. What we're doing is part of addressing this terrible crisis that we face. If we don't address this crisis, it's going to get much, much worse for us. We have to address this and we have to do it now. I mean, I think you're going to ask, what about the risks if we don't act? What we have to remember is that the people who are engaged in this non-violent civil resistance, they're ordinary people like me. I'm former principal scientist for Shell. These are ordinary people sounding the fire alarm in a burning building. I have immense respect for them, putting their futures, their careers, their freedom on the lines for our children's future. This is about our children's future. Well, you know, you talked about the job that you did with Shannon. So I presume you're probably a relatively wealthy pensioner in, in respect or you know what I mean? You're, this this whole idea of stopping production of oil right now and uh, the current cost of living crisis. No, no, not stopping production of oil right now. We're saying no new licenses for oil and gas projects. That gives us from the North Sea roughly eight years at current consumption of oil and gas. Now, that's plenty of time to move to have a transition out of oil and gas. We could do that in that period. Once we set that target, yeah. once we make that commitment, we can make that happen. But, but to what though? Because in eight years, you're saying eight years, you think we've got an eight year reserve. Within eight years, what will be ready to supply the rest of the United Kingdom then, if not oil and gas? We have to move to renewables. That means that we have to start insulating our homes. That means we have to start managing demand. We have to improve our public transport systems. And we have to build a lot more renewable infrastructure. Mm, well, that, that sounds quite heavy on, on the carbon itself, just doing all that within that time. Uh, but we hear what you're saying. A lot of people wouldn't probably disagree with you. Uh, but ultimately, the protests would probably be quite disruptive to a lot of people, and especially now with the cost of living crisis. It sounds... It seems they, don't, like an they don't have to be... 
they don't have to be disruptive at all, Nana. If the government follows this very simple uh, request that we're making, this very simple demand, let's not forget that what we're demanding is a mainstream position. The International Energy Agency called for it last year. The, it, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change called for it. Our PM called for it before COP26. Mm. The UN yeah. Sec General Secretary, Antonio Guatras, he called for it too. We have to end our addiction to oil. And the sooner we end our addiction to oil, the sooner we can ensure that in the future we don't have this kind of cost of living crisis. But, but, but do, listen, I, I hear you, but we, we are ultimately going that way anyway. So I'm not quite sure why it feels that the protest is time just at the, the po point where we're struggling with the cost of living. Graham, thank you so much for joining us. That's Graham Buss. He's the spokesperson for Just Stop Oil and former principal scientist of Shell. So I'm asking, <clears throat> excuse me, are Just Stop Oil, of course, for good or just disruptive? Let's have a quick look at what you've been saying. Andrew says, in a democracy, we have the right to protest. It doesn't matter if you agree with them or not. Uh, Doug says the police really ought to be getting them off the road. Um, let's see, who's this? Sarah. Sarah says, I just feel bad that young people are so anxious about the climate. The science is scary and it can be easy to get overwhelmed with fear for the state of the planet. Right, well, yes, keep those thoughts coming at GB News. But right now, this is GB News online on digital radio and on TV. I'm Nana Aquir. Coming up, we'll continue our Great British debate. I'm asking, are Just Stop Oil a cause for good or just disruptive? You'll hear the thoughts from my panel, political YouTuber Maya Tusi and media personality and writer Christina Hamilton. Now let's get back to our Great British debate this hour. I'm asking, are Just Stop Oil a cause for good or just disruptive? Protesters from the organisation have blocked oil terminals across England today as part of demands that the government stops new oil and gas projects. GB News reporter Amelia Harper spoke to one protester earlier need to just stop oil. And if that's wind turbines, then I think that's a much, much smaller price to pay than the end of civilization as we know it. And I'm not exaggerating. We need to stop oil now or we're going, our children will have no future. <laughs> it's hysterical, isn't it? I mean, but it's, it's no wonder a lot of children have anxiety over this. They call it eco-anxiety. I mean, seriously, that woman. But as millions of households across the UK face a cost of living crisis with energy prices spiking from today, I'm asking, are Just Stop Oil a cause for good or just disruptive or just hysterical? Uh, let's see what my panel make of that. I'm joined by a political YouTuber, Maya Tusi, and media personality and writer, Christina Hamilton. Christine, I'll come to you straight away. Way. I mean, you saw that woman just... <laughs> First of all, let us all agree that everybody has a right to be heard. Absolutely. Everybody, free speech, etc., etc. Mm -hmm. So they have every right, but they do not have every right to block other people, etc., etc. So we're all in favour of free speech, but not that sort of obstructive stuff. I, I don't know where to begin. And with the, the gentleman who was on X Shell Fellow... Um, there is no climate crisis. This is the first thing. We haven't got time to debate the whole climate crisis argument, but people are getting themselves whipped up into a frenzy. I mean, this country could... Well, I don't know about this country, but the whole of Wales could shut down. That's all the people, all the animals, all the industry, all the sheep even, everything, could shut down. And China, the output from China, would overtake in a couple of weeks because they're building all these, these new coal-fired power stations. I mean, they just... I, I, don't, I say, I don't know where to begin, but here we go. Oh. I mean, we do, what we need to do is not build a few more windmills that are pretty hopeless. Oh. You know, we, we, need to, we need to get the North Sea oil and yeah. gas out there. We need to start fracking. We need to start opening up the coal-fired power stations again, like Drax. At the moment, mm -hmm. Drax is being fuelled by wood chips that I we know, import. I mean, it's than... unbelievable. Yeah. Stop decommissioning nuclear power stations. I mean, we, need, we do need to get real about all this, but not in the way that... I mean, that woman was unbelievable. You're just the earth was coming to an end. It was like chicken licking in well, the sky. Oh, I down. I, I, OK, <laughs> firstly, I'll be honest. I can't take anyone seriously who wears an adult nappy to go to these protests because they were being interviewed throughout the day. They were saying that they were wearing nappies so that they could stay. I can't take it seriously if you're wearing a nappy. Nappy? So, yeah, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't <laughs> see that. <laughs> Secondly, read the room. We are going through a cost of living crisis. Yeah. And then there are a couple of issues. As we discussed earlier in the show, that just because you, you speak to you as an MP to speak to your constituents doesn't mean you understand real people, or just because you're a teacher doesn't mean you can run the Department of Education. Mm. Dr. Boss, uh, who is the spokesperson for Just Stop Oil, was part of Shell 
yet exactly. he didn't even know his <clears throat> basic facts. Uh, whether you know, he was saying, well, we don't really get much from the, the North Sea or Russia, even though we're getting quarter from that in terms of oil and gas overall. He didn't know that uh, his campaign and his people saying, we have, depending on who to, you speak to, either two years or four years or 24 hours to save the world. Mm. Yeah, they were saying, yeah, we're panicking, but it's okay, we have eight years. To, you know, just like, they don't build new ones, and eight years, oh, so you're going to be fine. So eight years is fine. Yes, but we're so going to die in four years. <laughs> I know. So, so it, it, just, it does, it, you know. Unbelievable. And the thing is, if he did work for Shell all those years ago, then he has been complicit in part of this in some respects. I he? It's, for one, it's he was working there. And that's not insulting him. That's not an insult. No, if you fact. worked for them, that is a fact, it's right? A fact. Yeah. So it's all very well you're turning around saying, oh, well, we need to be doing this now. Yeah. But hang on a minute. What about, you know, the back bit where you were working for them? Can we ask one quick thing? Yeah. Um, there's another kind of dark truth and reality no one's really talking about. Um, whilst actually it's very disruptive what they're doing, really, and especially mm. now, there is a problem with the, the police and the, the, the government. Where when uh, in Slip Britain, we're blocking roads, you know, ordinary people driving, it took them about a few months to arrest like four or five yeah, of them. Yeah, well, yeah. Today, they arrested 19 of them because they were blocking corporations and big, big um, oil and gas companies. And that, you know, is, is a weird kind of question no one's actually talking about. And it should be a debate well, for a lot time. But do you think that they're doing that now because of the well, yeah, ridiculous it's reactionary thing? But why was it not as important or at least important enough when it was in Slip Britain doing it to ordinary people, you know, going, going to work, going to hospital, emergencies? But now that, you know, they're yeah. panicking because everything's in the headlines, now they're trying to arrest people. Like, oh, interesting. Well I, I, well, I think it's about time. Listen, I don't disagree with the idea that we should try and reduce our reliance on fossil fuel in some respects, but I don't really think fossil fuel is 100% uh, Satan and en uh, an, an enemy from within because a lot of those other fuels that they're talking about will then be powered by fossil fuels yeah. and yeah. things. So yeah. It, yeah. And we're, we're also, whilst we talk about how we don't use too much fossil fuel, we're offsetting our carbon to things like China. So, exactly. it's just, so all it is is an equation that makes us yeah. look better. So we just do the sums and look at us, aren't we, net it zero? It makes us feel really good, so, doesn't it, and smug. I'm, I'm, all the time, the same yeah. um, output is going on in, in exactly. We're just exporting the problem. Yeah, so to me, listening to that, I just think, well, you know, to please, no wonder the kids. I did this piece about eco-anxiety mm. and how the kids are just hysterical because they don't believe there'll be a planet left for them and we <laughs> evil adults are destroying it for them. Look, we want to live on this planet ourselves. We want to stay on here as well. well. Uh, and what, 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 sorry, but what, what these young people seem to forget, they look at sort of fogies like me and they think, well, you'll be dead soon, it doesn't matter to you. People like me have got, I haven't got children, but we've got nephews and nieces and grandchildren. That's what they don't understand. Virtually everybody in this mm, country, mm. whatever age they are, yep. has a massive stake in the future of the planet. Just yeah. because you're old, yeah. it does not mean to say that you don't care. Well, exactly. And we want to make sure that the choices that the government make are the correct ones. Because remember, we were all told to buy diesel, diesel, diesel. Oh. Now, now diesel is the spawn of Satan. Do you know what I mean? Mm. So mm. we want to make sure with this whole electric revolution, I'm sorry, but I'm not convinced what you're going to well, pull up the ground every everywhere, put these things in, then you're going to have a cable, somebody yeah. could trip over, then I'm going to have to buy a completely new car that's got every single component, mm. something goes wrong. Will it be like a phone battery that after yeah. a couple of years you have to replace the entire yeah. thing because yeah. the rest yeah. of it... My problem is um, yeah. they, they have a similar problem to a lot of left-wing causes. It's, it's all about making themselves feel better. Yeah. They, yeah. Their problem is, like an, an, a lot of other movements, they're not pro-something, they're more anti-something. Mm. So they're not really pro-green because if they were pro-green, then nuclear is green. Then, you know, uh, fracking, if you do it safely yes, and in future ways, it'll be a yeah. lot uh, yeah. Yeah. cleaner and cheaper than, you know, your kind of old school ones. They don't, they're not pro anything. They're oh. more anti what's happened until now. And well, he didn't have an alternative, did he? Because I said, after the eight years, what would you do? Or more renewables? Well, which ones and, and, and how and what? Because eight years isn't actually that long to get the infrastructure in place if you're going to remove kind of fossil yeah. fuels. <laughs> it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen in that time, is it? And well, these people never stop to think also about the, the energy input into their mobile phones, into their yeah. electric exactly. Exactly. Et cetera, they're never, or to make a heat pump, for or example. Starbucks. Well, exactly. Starbucks. Or even the insulation, what, it, what, what yeah. they're going to use to insulate the walls. But let's, uh, let's see what you're saying, because today we're asking, are Just Stop Oil a cause for good or just disruptive? And lots of you have been getting in touch with your views. Uh, Toby says at the end of the day, they've got a point. Renewables, insulation and even nuclear are definitely the future of energy for the UK. Yeah, listen, Toby, nobody's arguing with them, but I think we already knew that and that's where we're headed. So we just don't get why, why they're bothering with this. Uh, Stuart says they're so disruptive. Let's remove them from blockading the highway. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, John says uh, 
They are super disruptive and are doing nothing to encourage people to support their cause. Willow says oil is actually incredibly dangerous and disruptive, and it's good that we are having a discussion about it. It can kill surface dwelling animals and birds by poisoning or suffocation. Yeah, and I think the panel would agree that oil isn't the best thing if we can find an alternative. But what's the point of doing what they're doing? It's just it doesn't nothing's going to happen with that.